I'm a type 1 diabetic using an insulin pump, continuous blood glucose monitor, and open source software to create a closed loop artificial pancreas. It's Tuesday, April 19th, and I am crushing type 1 diabetes. This is my story. Today is going to be my wrap up for the 10 day trip I took to the UK in Paris. Low of 43 and high of 323. I actually thought I had gotten higher, but I checked back the data and I didn't actually get any higher than that, thank God. You can see my average was 124, 72% in range with 22% above and 6% below. Quite amazing, in 124 average, I felt like I wasn't doing as good when I was out there. I don't have standard deviation here, but um, I think that was the main thing, the ups and downs that I wasn't super happy with on the trip. It's definitely difficult um, figuring out how many carbs things were and how much they were gonna hit my system. It is a little bit different than here in the US. So my two week A1C is up at 5.8, definitely a bit higher, but uh, amazingly still below six. I'm still pretty happy with that considering everything, uh, everything that happened on the trip and not having open APS the whole time, et cetera. Looking at the data simply for the time I was gone, you can see here I had some ups and downs along the way. On average, I was having nighttime highs. I think that's the, the biggest eye opener here. And I think it was from the long acting carbs I had for dinner. That was the big thing. I had a lot more carbs than I normally have. I also had some lows during the day because uh, I was walking around and pretty aggressive during the day. Seems like every step tracker is different, but what you can see here is I had steps from about six or 7,000 all the way up to 25,000. This was consistently three to four to maybe even five X what I normally have on any given day in terms of steps. A lot of exercise, but there was definitely a lot of tired legs days and a lot of movement on that front. The other thing I do is I use a Why Things body scale, which I haven't talked about my weight much lately, but I did track that before I left and after I returned. You can see here I was 178.8 right before I left and 183.8 when I returned. Basically across those 11 days, I gained 5.0 pounds despite all of those steps. So a lot of carbs. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my slow carb diet, which I can talk more about this week, but um, definitely feel like I need to lose about 10 pounds now. Since I'm transparent here, this is my lifetime of using my Y Thing scale of my weight. Way back in uh, January 2011, I was about 186 and I did a ton of work to get myself down. You can see drops near 170. And I definitely have ups, ups and downs. I go on this diet once every uh, couple times a year and then things sort of creep back up. See generally on the right, things are up. I haven't been weighing myself as much and things are definitely up. So need to do some work there. I've had a lot of interesting results doing a slow carb diet, both with diabetes and weight. So we'll look at that in the coming weeks. I want to look at my total insulin that I took by day, day over day. Now I got to find a report that can get me that. It's in my pump, but I don't upload anything to the mini med site, the Medtronic site, because it's too hard on the Mac. I really need better software. I can't find any way to get this easily. So I just pulled it off of my daily totals for my pump and punched it in. I got a spreadsheet with the last 30. You could definitely see the last 10 or so days on the right was a big jump upwards. And I think that's what happened. It happened when I ate all of those carbs and I had to take a bunch of insulin to compensate for it. So think that that's why with that spike, I didn't log my food, but that's sort of showing why I gained so much weight in that time frame as well. It looks to me like I'd like to have a goal of keeping under 50 units per day, um, but we'll see. My current pattern is 37.9 units in terms of basal, so that would only leave me about 13 unit for boluses. Still small, but with this slow carb diet, you never know. And I did have some days under 50 here on the chart that I showed a second ago. I'd like to do a post teardown that shows what I came home with at the end of my trip in terms of supplies. I got one bag of stuff. So I ended up with one sensor. I think I left with two. I used it and swapped it pretty early on and I was actually worried about potentially running out. I think in the future I'm gonna bring three instead of two if I have them available. Even though they last for two weeks, you never know. Next I had four infusion sets. I actually brought three extras at the last minute um, because I had the sure tees. Having four at the end is good, but I still feel like um, I didn't pre-plan that. So wanna be smarter about that. 
The other thing is I somehow have no more reservoirs. I must have only brought two. I thought I had more, I maybe lost some. I don't know, but I have none. So need to bring more of those. Now one bottle of my insulin is empty here, but I still carried it around. The other one's pretty much full. I only had these two, so I sort of had no choice. It seems like the amount of insulin was perfectly fine for what I needed on this trip. The thing I ended up with was some actual carbs, some fast acting carbs and things I could eat. I watched the video at the beginning, I actually said I don't bring anything for that and definitely had to go to the store and pick things up a couple times along the way. So need to be better prepared. I also brought two batteries for my pump, lithium batteries, since I'm running OpenAPS, and I used one of them. I have one left, so that was fine. I brought pretty much everything I had on OpenAPS. I could have been more prepared with uh, software and having everything working, but no problems with that stuff in terms of supply count. There you have it. That's the teardown. One last thing, I did get into my second batch of strips. I had about 40 strips left at the end, so that seemed good think about the fact that I didn't actively bring an extra battery for my meter so that might be a good idea in the future. Okay, that's really it for the teardown. Another thing, sharps container. I don't bring a sharps container and I had some sharps I couldn't get rid of so I had to carry them around. Uh, just if it, what anybody's doing for travel and sharps container or how they're getting rid of their sharps. Um, it's a little dicey the way I just have them floating around in my back. Thank you.